So I want to talk to you guys more about dimethylaminopyridine, or DMAP, as it's often called, and its reaction with methyl iodide, which is the reaction you guys did in the lab this week. But I want to talk about this reaction in terms of thermodynamics, and basically the, the relative thermodynamic stability of reacting at the cyclic PN, pyridine nitrogen site, versus methylating at the exocyclic DN, dimethyl amino nitrogen site. And when you talk about differences in thermodynamics of reaction pathways, you should be considering a reaction coordinate diagram. And for this instance, we're going to put G on our y-axis and reaction coordinate on our x-axis. And as you guys have seen in the lecture, uh, one of the first steps in, in generating these reaction coordinate diagrams of two different uh, reaction pathways is to think about the, the energies of the starting materials. And since we have these two nucleophilic sites in DMAP, the PN and DN sites, we can consider these two distinctly different starting materials, a PN starting material and a DN starting material. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and start with the DN. And we'll put this in green. We'll give it a, an energy arbitrarily right here. And based on our studies in week one, the computational studies, we found that the, the purity in the PN site was more nucleophilic and more reactive. Uh, typically more reactive means more unstable, which means higher energy. So we should place uh, the PN starting material at a relatively higher energy than the DN starting material. And we'll indicate this with a red line for our PN. Now as this reaction progresses, both of these materials are going to go through some sort of transition state. We'll represent with a dot here. We're going to assume they both go through a similar transition state, so we only have to draw one dot here. Uh, the next thing to consider is the, the relative uh, stabilities or energies of the, the products that are formed at the end of this reaction, so the methylated pyridine. Um, we need to, so we need to kind of determine what the relative energies of methylating at the PN site versus the DN site. And, and since we're generating a positive charge on our final product, and we know that resonance is a really good way of stabilizing charge, uh, we should be looking at some different resonance structures of these molecules. So that's what we're going to do. So essentially we're going to assess the, the relative stabilities of these methylated products based on the resonance structures of, uh, of PN methylation versus the DN methylation. So let's start at the top here with our PN methylated DMAP. Uh, so first off, we're going to use our, our resonance arrows. And one of the first things we can do is we can move this adjacent pair of pi electrons onto the nitrogen, moving that positive charge over. And I will draw that structure. And as you should recall from the lecture, when you have an aromatic molecule like benzene or this pyridine type molecule, molecule, it's very easy to move that positive charge all the way around the ring to stabilize it via resonance. So we'll go ahead and draw the rest of those structures. So as you can see, just by moving that positive charge around the ring, we can add an additional three resonance structures. The interesting thing about DMAP is that there's a lone pair of electrons on that exocyclic nitrogen that we can uh, donate down to move that positive charge even further, giving us an additional resonance structure.
So in total we have five resonance structures that stabilize the positive charge when we methylate at the PN site of pyridine. So let's see what we can do when we methylate at the um, DN site. So we'll go ahead and draw in our resonance arrow. So the first thing that's tempting is to move this adjacent set of pi electrons down towards the nitrogen and try to move that positive charge around. But if we were to proceed in doing that, we would actually be putting five bonds. We'd be forming a double bond between the ring and the nitrogen and forming five bonds to nitrogen. That's something that is not ever going to happen. And that's really the only thing that we could even attempt to do from that. There aren't really any other electrons, pi electrons nearby to help move around that positive charge. So there are no resonance structures for uh, methylating at the DN site. So armed with this, this information, we should go back to our reaction coordinate diagram. So going back to our green, we can arbitrarily um, put our, our methylated product here for our, our DN product. We will call it DN CH3 or DN methyl, put a positive charge on it because it's a charge product. And we know due to having five resonance structures that the PN product is going to be much more stable. So we switch to our red, put that at a, some lower energy. And we're just all talking relative here, not absolute numbers. And we'll label this PNCH3. And then we'll go ahead and, and kind of connect the dots and draw our actual reaction pathway. So starting with the DN starting material, we go up through our transition state then come down to our methylated charge product. Doing the same thing, starting at the higher energy PN starting material, go through our similar transition state, coming down to our charge product that's more stable. And now by relating the differences in the delta Gs, we can see which pathway would be more favorable thermodynamically. And the difference between the starting material and the products is what determines our delta G in this instance. So we see a pretty minute delta G for our DN reaction pathway. And then uh, moving over to the PN reaction pathway, we get a much more substantial delta G, indicating that this uh, reaction pathway is going to be more thermodynamically favorable. So we've seen in our calculations that it would predict methylation at the, the PN site due, it, due to it being more uh, nucleophilic. Uh, this also gives us a, a higher energy starting material for the PN starting material, which would give it uh, would be more favorable thermodynamically. And we've also shown through resonance that the the methylated product is going to be more thermodynamically stable as well. So hopefully this helps you answer uh, some of the questions in the post lab.